Everyone, welcome to another YouTube video. This week we're going to be going over how to paint the wing membranes on the Tyranid Hive Tyrant. This is a really fast process. It's very simple with quite a nice effect. So as always, I hope you like it. If any questions or queries, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll absolutely get, absolutely get back to you. If, as always, you want to support the channel, feel free to check out the Patreon. That is pretty much what keeps me going. It's got more videos and more in-depth videos as well as options for one-to-one -one tuition. So feel free to check it out. Regardless, thank you everyone for the support. It means a huge amount to me. And um, here we go. So the colors that we're going to be using on this, Games Workshop Rhinox Hide, Valeo Model Color Orange Red, Valeo Model Color Tan Earth. First step that we need to do, <clears throat> the whole model's been base coat. We've been primed in black, like has been, like we talked about previously. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to paint the wing membranes with Games Workshop Rhinox Hide. We're just going for a solid color here. Now, what I would say is your brush stroke, if you do the brush stroke the direction that the wings have been sculpted, then you won't need to have such a perfect coverage. Now, what I mean by that is when you look at the wings, what will what Games Workshop do anyway is their wings have like sculpted lines that run across them. So if you do your brush stroke, say it runs across the wings, you don't necessarily need to have such a perfect base coat because your brush strokes, which will your brush strokes will match the direction that the wings have been sculpted in. So if you've got a less consistent base color of Rhinox Hide, it will the, the streaks and stuff that you leave in the paintwork will match what the sculpture has given us. And that's a really handy thing if you're looking to speed things up, especially like if you're painting gargoyles, you've got 30, 40, 50 gargoyles to paint. All of a sudden, doing one inconsistent coat on all of those wings with the brush stroke the right direction will be much, much faster than doing two coats to get a consistent coverage across all of those gargoyles. So it's a little tip that for army painting can be incredibly useful because all that will end up happening is you'll have like these streaky marks between the rhinox hide and the black and it will look fine in the end so just something to think about the next thing that we're going to do is i'm adding some of the vallejo model color orange red to the rhinox hide now the idea here is where we talked about previously about the direction of the brush stroke, you can see the direction of my brush stroke now. So the thing with these wings is, is we want something very fast and very simple to get a really cool result. So I'm not painting in veins or trying to make the wings look transparent or anything like that. I want something far more straightforward than that. So all we're going to do, where we talked about the brush, the brush stroke direction with the last layer of paint, doing exactly the same thing. So you can see where Games Workshop, in this case, have sculpted these little recesses and marks along the wing membrane. Well, what we're gonna do is our brush strokes are going to follow those little wing, those little sculpted lines. So that's the direction of our brush stroke. What we're going to do is we're thinning the paint down. So we want this to be fairly transparent. So in this case, my paint was maybe two parts water to one part paint. The idea is when we put this paint on the model, we want the Rhinox hide to show through. So the paint color that we have on the wet palette, on our palette, is not going to be a perfect match to what we put on the actual wing itself. We're not going to worry about lighter areas or darker areas or anything like that. All we're going to worry about is covering the whole of the wing membrane with these lines because we're just painting lines. Don't worry about them being too thin or consistent. We want different widths of lines, different lengths of lines. So we're looking for a inconsistent result here. We don't need this to be very neat. This is the foundation of the texture that we're creating on the wings. I'm not necessarily saying this is an easy thing. I can do this quite quickly because I'm, I'm, I'm quite used to painting like this. So take your time, but you're doing an army like Tyranids, you're going to probably, potentially you're going to have a lot of wings to paint. By the end of it, I can guarantee, like, you'll probably be a master of doing this. You can see how, like, it's, it's really, really straightforward. Paint the lines in, show the Rhinox hide through. So we don't want to just cover the whole of the wing. 
First of all, we want some of the we want some of the Rhinox hide to show through between the lines that we're painting. And because this paint is transparent, it's going to end up showing some of the Rhinox. It's going to end up showing the Rhinox hide through the actual paint itself. So it's going to make the paint darker than it actually is. Now the benefit of this is, is with that one paint mix, we can do multiple coats of these lines and it will build up, it will gradually get brighter and brighter. So we end up with like this nice gradient. And because if we compare it to the lines that we did on the skin, because the lines on the skin was with such an opaque mark, it gave us a very rough, um, it gave us a very rough surface, looking surface. The lines were very extreme, but because the paint is far thinner on this one, we're not gonna get anything so, so extreme. So it's gonna be a lot more subtle. Now, as we go brighter with this as well, what we're going to start doing is that Rhinox hide and orange red mix. We're going to start adding the tan earth to it. So this will brighten it up. It'll keep it in that nice orange tone, which is what we're after. Because we don't want it to match the skin or we don't want to match. We don't want it to match other areas. So we're getting a slight variation in the color. The next thing that we need to think about with this. Although, again, I'm still not being overly careful with it. It doesn't need to be. Some of the lines are really quite thick and messy, but the priority is, is that our brush stroke is going in the direction that that we, we have chosen. So whatever information the sculpt has given us, we're following that brush stroke again. But in this case, what I'm gonna start doing is, as I go brighter, I'm only going to start working towards the, the area of the wing that is receiving the light. So in this case, the wings are held up so the area towards the bottom of the membrane is going to receive more light than the area at the top because it's going to be in complete shadow. So the previous layer where we painted the whole of the wing membrane, that was the foundation of this texture. As we go brighter and brighter, we no longer need to cover everything because as we're going brighter, that pushes towards the idea that there's more light hit in this area. So if someone looks in the shadow area, it's still going to make sense because we have the foundation of that texture with the darker paints. As we look at the lighter area, it's going to get brighter and brighter and the texture is going to get even more extreme. So it looks more interesting. And you can see the difference there with the lighter areas and the darker areas. Now, it is a case of just building these lines up slowly and making sure that you've got that gradual transition. So this color here, this is the final color. So this is Vallejo Model Color Tan Earth. With this one, I'm picking out any of the edges of the wings. So you can see the edge of the top of the wing there and the brightest parts of the wings. I'm also making sure every time I go brighter, I'm still leaving the areas of different the, the previous colors showing through. I can't stress this enough. If you just cover the whole of the wing, you may as well just paint it one color. You need to leave a lot of what you've had previously showing through. This is a really good um, result, painting result, um, and a really strong process for army painting because what it does is, because you're, first of all, you don't have to be careful. It's not a very neat process. So you can do it very, very quickly, especially the longer you've been doing it, the better you'll get, the faster you can do it. The other thing is, is because you're actually painting less because you're not covering the whole of the model, it speeds things up as well because you don't have to worry about getting really smooth coverage or a complete coverage all the time. And that's the big strength in this. It's the simple fact that because you don't have to paint all of it because you're only painting lines and you want that texture to show through, speeds up your painting process hugely because it's one of those things where if you've got let's say for example you're painting gargoyles and you've got 30 40 50 gargoyles to paint the truth is is if you've only got to paint like a third of the wing membranes for the highlight area that saves you so much time so it's it's a very good army painting technique and also the fact that you get this material texture this membrane texture makes it quite striking as well. And we're basically gonna do that on all of the wing membranes. Now, what I would say, you'll notice, you can see the big membrane near my thumb. 
and then the one to the left of it, there's a very big difference between the two. The one on the left needs more texture in the shadow area. You can see it looks very plain. So it's very easy to fix that. You just go back with one of the darker mixes and just build up a little bit more texture. And I do do that later on, but I don't show it on the video because there's not much point in me just going over what I've already done. So if you do end up having an area that kind of just starts looking like it's unpainted or you can't see the texture enough, just go back with one of those brighter paints or darker paints, sorry, and build up those lines again and it will solve the issue. But that's pretty much the process. So you can see it's a semi-transparent paint building up lines and those lines get brighter and brighter going towards the areas of the wing that is going to receive more light. And that's it. It's really that straightforward and it's it can be incredibly striking. If you can see the picture of the finished Hive Tyrant, the, the wing stands out really quite a lot. Yes, if you look at it up close, it would need a lot more work to get it up to like a display standard, but that's not what we're going for. And it works on the obviously on any on any bat style wings. So as always, I hope it's been helpful. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions. If you want to see something more advanced when it comes to wings, then I can absolutely do that. But you guys need to let me know. Otherwise, it just ends up at the bottom of the list. But as always, I hope it's helpful. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you, everyone, for watching, as always. And um, this is the finished Hive Tyrant that you can see on screen. I'm not going to do any more videos on it because all of the other parts of this model you can see as part of the Gene Stealer videos which I'll put our links for in the description. So if you want to know how the blue and the details are done, check out the Gene Stealer videos. But there we go. Cheers.